Ah, what's going on, guys? Well, it's just still the 10th of March, 2021, still Wednesday. It is 2.36 Pacific Standard Time, a little chilly for some people, probably still warm for others. And the bombshell continues concerning about Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, I really can't stand bullies sometimes. It drives me crazy. I hear it, I see it all the time, and then over the past several years we've been dealing with a lot of it. Hell yeah. A long time, actually. Political bullies and now environmental, biological bullies. More political bullies. The world is filled with adversaries and adversity and conflict. I guess it's the nature of our universe that we live in in the first place. Yes, I am keeping my eyes on the television screen afar from here, trying to see if there's been any other news reports concerning about Harry and Meghan getting bullied to death by either the royal court or the court of the people, which is the press, or public opinion at this point. And they're split down half on this. When you have a guy like... If I'm going to be opening up that damn Pandora's box, a belligerent that came off of Good Morning Britain a couple of days ago because his opinion didn't matter anymore. Well, this is what happens when you become a belligerent too damn long and people got sick and tired of it and they called him on it. He's starting off like a damn bully. Actually, he's starting, he's starting off like a big crybaby. When you call a bully that way, when you call a bully on it and you gang up on him, you're telling the bully to knock the shit off. You want to understand why he went to he went through what he went through. Uh, hang on a second. I'm going to put you on pause real quick. Sorry about that. I had to keep track of what was going on, and it is a it's a tap dance in the social media, not to mention in the regular media and the political circles at the swale regarding Great Britain and the ghost of Princess Diana and what she has gone through surfaced all over again. And a lot of people aren't happy and comfortable with this. Not That also includes the royals. Because they're seeing this flashing in their eyes again. Now, 30 plus years ago, within that time period, we had lost the world's princess. The world kind of adopted Princess Diana of Great Britain. A simple woman married into royalty into in the 70s. Catapulted into fame. Subjugated to British traditions worse than what a traditional, actually what, what a commoner would understand. And isolated a great deal. She had two children and her expressing to her husband, Prince Charles, of what she was going through. There was like no way for her to get past the damn thing in the first place. And she was fighting it left and right. When the world lost her because of an accident, or was it deliberate? But it was a car wreck that took her life. Might as well be a metaphor for her life. Trying to run away from the paparazzi, trying to run away from everything else. If you want to use it as that kind of a metaphor. And then a car wreck took her life. Maybe she was freed at that point of her depression. Maybe she gained even more sadness. Or maybe it was relief. We'll never know. But the legacy continues in the form of Meghan Markle. Echoing the same situation regarding Princess Diana. One would think that someone in the Royals would be able to understand the situation. 
This is the opinion popping up all over media, social and otherwise. And it's also hard for the royals to understand this because they're seeing Princess Diana all over again. When you have a bully who's so firmly committed to freedom of speech and yet he doesn't want to hear somebody else's speech because they're bad-mouthing, then he clearly doesn't understand what freedom of speech is all about because clearly he didn't live in America or understand America and its history or understand Americans, period. Freedom of speech, you're protected by government, but not the consequences left and right. And if you're going to be a First Amendment supporter, you have to support and offend that right, no matter how ugly and hard the damn speeches are. There was a movie, American President, with Michael Douglas in it emulating this situation and a famous speech is all over social media including YouTube you can check out the President Andrew famous speech in the the, uh, the American president and what he has said has been quoted in different ways in different times to where you have to believe in it because it's it suits us to a T for those who value their First Amendment rights like crazy. We can support the right. We just don't have to support the damn argument. We can tell you in court that we understand and value your right to say this shit. We're just not going to agree to it. We're not going to agree to it. We're going to agree to disagree that you're full of shit. When it comes time for nervous and mental issues at this point over here, there is no disagreement. That is like one of the pillars right in front of your face, a stone pillar. And it has to be taken care of. It has to be investigated. It has to be brought up to the light. That people actually do have mental health issues, and it's hard as hell for anyone to talk about it. I know because I've been doing it for a hell of a long while. I've been doing too many damn videos. I've been doing too many damn audios trying to get this shit off my damn chest. And it's still difficult to talk about. Even to the people who think they understand, they have no clue. Unless they've already walked through your shoes, through your path, through whatever you've gone through, there's no way for them to understand the damn thing. They'll say it just to say it. But until they know it, until they walk your damn path, that's nothing. Even for someone who claimed he's seen someone who walked through it and deny it, it's a different story altogether. Right now, pause it to take a dog out. That's a reality check. Reality check. I'm not going to go for the theatrics now unless I have to. And the theatrics is taking a dog out in the wind and the rain and the threat of it not really fun I'll tell you neither is dealing with politics or religion or bullies left and right and they are a pain in the ass to deal with mental health issues are they're not easy to deal with especially when you're talking with people who have walk through the same path. You can still relate to them, but they still look at you and still wonder if you understand what the hell they're talking about. And the thing is, I do understand what you're talking about. I mean, if I've walked through it, I and mean, I've already been through it, I know what they're dealing with. There's no question. There's no... There's no question on it. Let's give me one quick second. Well, gee, sports fans... Crazy people, crazy things. Wardrobe changes. What happened to this person here? He changed on you. Is that normal? Well, consider mental health. Is it normal or is it not normal? We consider certain behaviors normal and other behaviors not. So when you have somebody who's claustrophobic or actually closed in regarding their 
commitment to a marriage and then to a family that you had no knowledge of what the hell's going on and you're suddenly trapped into the political intrigue of it all it's scary as hell because you don't know the rules and regulations even though when they do tell you the rules and regulations for the thing it becomes even worse it becomes your own worst nightmare because now whatever freedoms that you had you've lost and whatever behaviors they're forcing down on your throat you hate like crazy such as the case which we're facing in the, in the form of Harry and Meghan Meghan tried and I don't wish to demean anybody regarding mental health issues including the royal couple because I understand what it means to have that kind of issue going on well not in royal families but uh, my own damn families and everything else the expectations placed upon you well expectations are forced on other people left and right or placed on them either voluntarily or not until they realize what the hell they got themselves into and then can't find a way to get the hell out of it or even change it and mutate it or even adapt to it and the thing you can do is just run away from it some people don't even have that cho choice or opportunity they have to go through it battered and beaten because they expect to be quote unquote stronger at the end because they know how to be deal with it instead of coming out looking like mincemeat <laughs> so in many of my videos I have put out disclaimer saying that I don't know diddly shit I got no degree in anything I'm only a student at a college and it's only my own observations at this point that I say of what I've seen, what I've observed, what I've read. I'm not an expert in anything, not looking for followers or anything else like that. So, throw the damn uh, disclaimer out. Let's get on with the damn shit here. Now, if this does happen to get to Meghan and Harry, the royal couple, look, I may not understand what goes on behind the royal curtains over there to see what the hell's going on, but I do understand about suffering. What goes on in this damn noggin over here? I've had enough of it as it is. And dealing with doctors and hacks and quacks and shrinks at this point over here will tell me certain techniques that I just listen, tried. Okay, then what? <sniffs> we can give you medications. Screw that noise. I've had a lifelong thing against doctors, hacks, quacks, medications, and being turned into a damn lab rat. I've had enough of it. It doesn't mean I'm an anti-vaxxer or anything else like that. I'll go for the vaccinations if necessary. But I'm not going to be someone else's lab rat in trying to get myself, quote-unquote, modified. It's like me being put back into the damn Brave New World situation where I have to be hooked up on Soma all over again. And I've seen what medications do to a family member. They don't get enough of it or else it's... <laughs> They go insane, and if they don't get their medications timely enough, they definitely do go insane. That's my own damn personal history and observation at this point over here that I've seen my own family, both my brother and my mother. If you've seen the pictures behind me on the cabinet over here, both are deceased. Ma, back in 2013, God rest her soul, and my brother in 2018. So yes, I'm going through a hell of a lot of grief, depression, anxiety, PTSD, and everything else under the sun at this point over here that I don't even like. And yet, I tried to get diagnosed by doctors and said, oh, you're just normal, you're fine. But I never had to plead to a damn primary care physician concerning about PTSD. He saw the science and he says, yeah, you've got it. Then why did any of the other schmucks ever diagnose me in the first place? Because they weren't looking for it. Not even the family knew. Family had the science right in front of them. They just didn't realize it. Someone else was supposed to be the nut in the family, and I was supposed to be the medical case. Well, turns out I was a doubleheader. And yes, I talk about these things a lot on my damn videos left and right, because it's the only therapy I have is to point it out there. I'm not looking for the gathering followers at this point over here, or a cold classic. I'm just telling what it is, what I'm going through. And if some of the words of wisdom actually sink in someone else's brain and stay in there and hopefully maybe they can learn something that they're not the only ones 
going through a hell of a lot of crap in life. The only thing I can say is you're not alone. I've loaned out too many pairs of worn moccasins to a hell of a lot of people. It gets even worse is when they start dealing with the with the D word. And no, we're not talking about deficit either. We're talking about deceased death. Cessation of life. It's one thing to see a slow death. But a quick death is even worse. It's almost just as bad as when you're seeing someone die in front of you and you don't even realize they're dying. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally and the heart and soul. And you just missed the science. You missed a suicide left and right. You missed a slow death, the, the slow killing of oneself. The willing of one's life to end. Despite putting up a false front and a false smile sometimes, they are equally miserable. And you won't know it. The tsunami that you never see coming. It keeps doing its devastation over and over and over again. Besides the initial shock and initial wave, the after effects still kick in. For years to come. Now originally, if you're talking about meteorological and geological for a tsunami at this point over here, or even oceanography, when you have a geologic event happening underneath, or maybe an earthquake on the shoreline, or even just close to the shoreline, it sets up the chain reaction down the road. And maybe, just maybe, the waves are coming or not, and you'll never know it, because the surface of the ocean is already turbulent enough as it is with regular everyday shit. But underneath, you never know until the damn thing hits. The waters recede, and then... Think of it emotionally. How much pressure and stress has one gone and cracked? How much aftershocks have been happening in that particular geologic area? Your own emotional center. And then you're spreading out these waves. Your placid surface doesn't show anybody else, but your time is coming. And then they see the pullback. And they're not seeing it coming. But for those who've actually understood the signs, they see it. And it's too late for them to react. And then it hits. I'm trying to put this in a scientific and poetic terminology that people can try understanding. And if this actually does get to Harry and Megan, I'm hoping this also relates to you as well. I don't talk about it unless I know about it. I've already had a lot of stuff happening in my life that would make me put under the ground by suicide, and I didn't. Don't tell me I was strong. I was just barely surviving and holding on. I've been through death. I don't like it. And that had effect on me throughout my entire life. And nobody picked up on the damn thing. Clergy thinks I was a total fear. And they just laugh it off. Doctors are just, huh? Well, let me give you a prescription. No, you're too damn young for it. You just have to deal with it. And the parents? Mocking... Ma didn't understand because I wasn't talking much about it because I couldn't even figure the damn shit out myself. It was so underneath and deep. She, show, she saw the signs. She was right there. There was an earthquake right in front of her. I went in for her chest surgery. Four years old. Open heart surgery to correct some mitral valves. One got sewed up, one got patched, and one left leaking because I died on them three times and get back to life. 
I wanted to stay up there in heaven, but no. God had other plans for me. So here I am. Scared shitless of life and scared shitless of death at this point over here because I've already been through it. Blocked out the death experience except what I told my mother and she told me later on what the hell I told her. And I still can't remember the damn thing because it still scares the living crap out of me. It's one of those things your mind refuses to deal with and accept, but it builds upon a foundation that lasts throughout a lifetime. So don't tell me I don't know about depression and suicide. And don't tell me I don't know anything about mental health issues at this point over here. I dealt enough with them. What is so subtle and so underneath, they don't even see the science, and they had the science in front of them all the single time. My aunt, my mother, my brother didn't even see it. Because my mother was always under the pressure for psych shit for my brother. And all my videos were talking about my brother and my mother. Recovering alcoholic, 32 years he was. Died sober and clean. Been through hell in a hen basket, and I've seen them both. Walked through it both. Still undergoing my own damn shit. I should have died a long time ago, but I didn't. I should have died recently, and I didn't. There's been a lot of times I wanted to kill myself. When I love, have a love and a, and a fear and grief... And so much crap going on right now that I don't seem to trust myself on some days. And other days, I'm struggling and I'm dealing and I'm coping. And I'm a college student and I'm struggling through that too. I'm surprised I'm doing a hell of a lot better than I did over 30 plus decades ago when I should have been died during that time. I had medications I was supposed to take care of acne, but it really was cancer treatment. I left fat cells in my brain and then left me to a point where I wanted to kill myself all the damn time. My neurology is screwed up. My, my neural pathways, my brain cells, whatever you would call them these days in the scientific or medical terminology. They still didn't figure it out. How could they? I could have died on them and then everyone would have realized the damn shit, neither would I. It had taken me years trying to figure this shit out, rethinking it all over again, and there was news articles I discovered in a college research project of what the hell happened. I can't find a doctor in the medical records to correspond my own damn data, but I know personally I came damn close to killing myself of walking that path. Also, a long time ago, too. In one particular place, I will work dead and almost. I don't share about it much. I don't laugh about it much either. Because mental health is not the laughable thing to say or talk about. It's one of the hardest damn things in your life that you have to deal with. It's your own damn self and your own damn demons and your own inner inner monster. You old Frankenstein ready to scream and yell and, and I thought Dr. and Jekyll and Mr. Hyde stories were scary enough as it is when you see your own damn self in the, in the mirror and you don't even recognize yourself. How's that work? How does that work? I'm seeing myself as a damn monster in some days. I don't even recognize myself. In other days I'm like, what the hell happened? I mean, I'll take a quick nap here and there. And just to try to get my brain cells not to go crazy or insane. I haven't had any regular sleep in God knows how long either. Not since I lost my brother. So don't tell me that I don't know anything about mental health issues at this point over here. I've got them. I'm not, I'm not beating my chest either. This is not the easiest damn thing for me to talk about. But I have to talk about it. Because it's the only way I'm going to be able to get through it day by day by day is to constantly get this shit off my damn chest. And I don't want to be medicated left or right because I'm afraid I'll, I'll be turning out to something worse. So I stay the hell away from that damn shit. I'm always afraid of triggers. Triggers of any sort. 
physical ob object, um, a picture, a sound, a phrase, a smell, a grouping, something hidden or blatant. And then boom, I'm on the emotional roller coaster again. It's hard as hell for me to recognize those damn landmines. I know they're out there. Call it fear, call it paranoia, and call it tune in experience on the damn shit. That's why I stay home. I want to go out. I want to go out and I want to experience life. I want to out, go out and, and shop. Walk around in a mall. Walk around up and down the street without feeling like I'm alright. I'm safe. I don't have to be blasted anywhere. I don't have to hear or feel or, or think of something that's going to put me on the edge again. I want to be able to look at myself in the mirror and breathe a sigh of relief just for one damn day or even for one damn hour. It hasn't been easy since the losing of my brother back in 2018. My mental barriers have gone crashing. I've gone to pot. So yeah, Harry and Meghan, you talk about suicide because you couldn't deal with the pressures of what's going on in a royal family. I dig it. I dig it. I've also seen how nervous and mental issues with other people have driven them even worse. And they scare me. Because I just might join them on the damn streets or somewhere else like it. And it scares the living crap out of me. And without an adequate support group or friends to help you out through this shit. It's lonelier than crap. It hurts like hell. No wonder people get twisted up inside. They're stuck in the caves too damn much. Glorious sunshine outside dealing with life on a life's terms. And you're dealing with a damn cave wall with the shadows dancing on it, either by the cave light or by campfire light. I'm thinking they're real. You don't think I know? You don't think I realize this damn crap? You don't think I think about it from time to time? I do. Sometimes when I go to bed, I play some arrows in my head just to get me sleeping, and sometimes it doesn't work. I've been seeing some of the shit on the news these days. I should be staying off the social media and regular media and just dealing with looking outside and enjoying the scenery. And then I'm reminded around me that other people have the same damn New Yorks as I've gotten. It's hard to sell to deal with it, isn't it? I know the entire world's not like that. Only your immediate neighborhood. The reactions and people's comments and their phobias and their own fears and their own damn anger and their prejudices. It's bad enough when you start agreeing with some of this shit. Makes you embarrassed as hell. I keep telling myself my mother raised me a hell of a lot better. She may have tried to raise me a hell of a lot better. And then life keeps smacking me upside the damn head at this point over here. And other people say, join us because you've got the same thing we've got. And I don't want to do that. I'll stay alone and die alone if I have to. I've got a companion dog and that's about it. She's an emotional support. And without her, I'll be going insane at this point. And I focus on taking her, taking care of her. It's one of the things I do. It's the thing I can focus on. Besides trying to keep a, an apartment clean. Regular, real life situations. It's bad enough that I have to have this damn thing with me. Forty buck hurricane. 
can't really evolve without it. Especially when you feel your mind's going and your body's already screwed up anyway. Getting involved in a workers' comp accident really does things to you because it jars the uh, cracks up on more of the damn berries you've got inside. And then that's what happened back in 2012. And then eviction, that really doesn't matter much. When you lose a mother that you've been with her all your life, yeah, it does things. And my brother was with me, and we were walking with each other on this one and went to different support meetings. Try to be active as possible. He has more of an issue. Just make it a watch. Give me one minute. My dog needs me. Well, I guess I talked enough anyway. Some people may do about a few minutes. I did about a little over a 30-minute session here. But keep this in mind. The discussions are long and deep and take a hell of a long longer than 30 minutes. As I said before, I've been doing too many of these damn things for over a year and a half. A lot longer than the COVID nightmare. I have to. I had to. I've been doing a hell of a lot longer audio recordings, too. Because they all are my thoughts, my feelings, my anxieties. Everything good and bad I can put on the tape. What I see, what I get pissed off enough about, what I want to be an activist about, trying to get out of myself. Not the easiest damn thing to deal with. It's not. When you sleep, either you're sleeping because your body's tired or your brain is trying to hide. Mine has. So, tell me something that I don't already know about nervous and mental. Tell me about the roller coasters that people get to be put on. The highs and lows, the twists and turns, the gut churnings, the nightmares, the tremors, the weird feelings, the temperature variations. Sometimes you hear or see things you're not supposed to. In my dreams, I'm usually having dreams of my family and I still think they're alive and they're dead. Or what's even worse is when I don't even recognize them and they're my family and they do things opposite. It scares the hell out of me. What gets even worse is when I'm dreading and anticipating hearing my family in real lifetime. Being awake. I say you've really gone over the edge during that time. Of course, if you happen to talk to yourself and answer yourself, they say you're crazy. Unless I pull up a damn phone app and says, no, I'm recording myself. What's your major excuse? Weaver John C., Roseman, California. I'm going to be ending this chat session here. said before, I'm not looking for a hell of a lot of followers, and I'm not looking for a conclave. I'm not looking for anything. I'm just trying to get my thoughts and feelings out. If people take what they can take and probably use it to help them, fine. If they're going to be saying I'm, I'm worse than a fool and idiot, well, they're probably correct either. I call myself that a lot of times. However, I don't call myself a son of a bitch. My mother was not a dog. But she wasn't paying any ass. Gotta love her for that. That's what mothers are for. So, Miss Markle, if you're going to be a mother, remember to your kids, be a pain in the ass. And Harry, keep saying a lot to your kids. Where's your mother? (laughs) 
borrowing a comedy shtick from somebody. I know it's been copyrighted, but still it works. Find humor wherever you can. Find laughter wherever you can. Find something of joy that maybe, just maybe, will get you past the next minute or two if you can. Even if it's a rotten joke that you thought of to share with people and you chuckle at it. Or maybe if you make a face in the camera and it makes you laugh. Or you do it in the mirror and make you laugh. But try to find something. Even just for a quick second may make the difference between life and death sometimes. And sometimes it's scary enough dealing with both concepts, believe me. You may use metaphors like crazy. Storms coming, storms leaving. Season of storms and no season of storms. Maybe. Every time it starts raining outside, I always keep thinking about my mother because she always likes to rain. My brother died on a sunny day. My mother died on a rainy day. My luck will be dying under a damn earthquake. Welcome to California. Well, welcome to the Pacific Rim of Fire. And a geologically hot spot thing around, which is the entire globe going on a geological madness of itself. Which is quite normal for it, and insane for us all. With that, rock on, guys.